we will read from verse 1 up to 16 to get that verse in context. And let us read it responsibly. I will read verse 1. You kindly read verse 2. John chapter 15 from verse 1. I am the true wife, and my father is the husbandman. Verse 2, please. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. I am the wine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue you in my love. <coughs> These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Let us pray. Our gracious, loving, heavenly Father, it is with thanksgiving we are in thy holy presence, and it is in the name of our loving Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, we do come, Lord, here in this manner. We thank thee, Lord, that thou hast given to us thy precious word, Word which is living and powerful. The word that can accomplish the work of God in our lives. The word that can teach us the heavenly way. So gracious loving Father, be pleased to open thy word to us this morning. Yes Lord, it is through the application of thy precious word in our lives that we could walk in the way that thou hast purposed us to. Gracious loving Father, we thank thee that thy word is living and thy word is powerful, is able to accomplish the work of God. So, Lord, we pray that Thou wouldst do this this morning as we meditate on Thy word. Lord, that, that Thou may speak to us. Yes, Lord, Thy voice is powerful and is full of majesty. So, speak to us, Lord. 
This is our cry, the cry of our hearts that we will not despise, that each one may hear the voice of God in our hearts, which may result in a newness of life, a new commitment and a consecration to the Lord. So dear now, our prayer. Accept our thanksgiving now, Lord. We give ourselves over to Thee. In the name of our loving Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. John chapter 15. We have the last few words of the Lord Jesus before He went to the cross. Now these words were spoken by the Lord Jesus the night before He went to the cross. And a few hours later, He was nailed to the cross. So these were the last words and there he speaks to us about bearing fruit. John chapter 15, I'm sure that many of us have had uh, some understanding of this chapter. We would have meditated on this chapter before and also sometimes preached on this chapter. And John 15 we have this progression starting with no fruit. Verse 2 Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. There is a branch that has no fruit. And then it moves on to bearing fruit. That is chapter 15, verse 2 in the middle. And every branch that beareth fruit. So from no fruit to bearing fruit. And then we also have in the same verse that he purged it that it may bring forth more fruit. So that is the third stage where we are uh, given uh, to understand that we should bear more fruit. And then we come in verse 5 to much fruit. In verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bring, bringeth forth much fruit. No fruit, then fruit, more fruit and much fruit. Now this is the way that every person should go. Without Christ, there is no fruit. Nothing divine. That is the idea here. Nothing heavenly in the life of a person who does not know the Lord Jesus, not believe in Christ. Now doing good, social service, and being available for people is something very good and essential at times. But bearing fruit in the context of the scriptures may two things, but I am only at the moment interested in the first one, that is the quality and the characteristics of the Lord Jesus, the one who was from heaven, found in the lives of human beings. That is bearing fruit. Now before we were born again, before we could come to a living relationship with Christ. We cannot have anything that is of heaven. Nothing heavenly about us at that time. So no fruit. But when we receive Christ, there is the fruit of Christ in us. The Lord Jesus producing His life in and through us. That is bearing fruit. But then, the Bible, the Word of God exhorts us to bear more fruit by abiding in Him. 
<coughs> Here we have in chapter 15, verse 2, middle part. Every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it. So by, by being with him, we begin to bear fruit. We begin to show something of heavenly color. We are beginning to show something of God in our lives. And then, when the Lord Jesus is in our life, He begins to purge our life. That is to make us clean. And then, we can bear more fruit. And that goes through a cutting, uh, pruning kind of process. Where, through which we begin to bear more fruit. And then in verse 5 we have, He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. As we learn to remain in Christ, live in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now these things have to be learned, exercised, practiced. And then as we grow in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus and our life in Him, then we begin to bear much fruit. Then people begin to identify us as those who follow Christ, followers of Christ. Otherwise, we cannot be identified like that if we do not bear much fruit. But I would like to now draw your attention to chapter 15 verse 6. 16, I'm sorry. Verse 16, our theme verse. There it says that you have not chosen me, I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. Now there another aspect. It's, it's, now it's taken to another level. Fruit that will remain. No fruit, fruit, more fruit, much fruit and fruit that will remain. Now this is the test, dear brothers and sisters, that we may have the fruit that remain, the fruit, the kind, the characteristics of the Lord Jesus that will not be shaken off our lives, that it may remain with us. Because the times that we live in are such that there is no encouragement from this world for us to continue bearing fruit, showing the characteristics and the character and the quality of the Lord Jesus, the nature of Christ. That is the fruit, the nature of Christ. And the Lord Jesus says, God says that He will shake the heavens and the earth in the last days. So that which is not permanent will fall off. This is a very real present problem today. We find that just because we uh, put on some kind of a show that I am a follower of Christ, I cannot continue for a long time. Suddenly you find that person is shaken and that person has now given up following the Lord Jesus. Or some characteristic of man comes up after a while. That which is human, that which is earthly, that which is carnal and fleshly, they come up overtaking that which is spiritual and that which is of Christ. In Hebrews chapter 12, Children that people that are people in Christ. Oh, they want to hear. Yeah. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. So, uh, Hebrews chapter 12, we have our Lord telling us that He's going to shake the earth. Verse 26 of Hebrews chapter 12. Whose voice then shook the earth. But now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, 
but also heaven. And this word yet once more signified the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Now this is the challenge that is now thrown at us, that we may possess the things of Christ that will not be shaken, that will not be taken by force away from us by this world. Yet once more signify the removing of those things that are shaken, as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. So the Lord Jesus said, I have chosen you, that you may go and bring forth fruit, and your fruit should remain. So our exercise today should result in we inherit fruit of the Lord Jesus or we produce fruit of the Lord Jesus that will not be taken away. That will remain. We find that very often in our own experience, the nature of man comes up so often. Our old nature, in our interaction, in our fellowship, together, we find very, very easily. So, the Lord is reminding us again and again, you have not chosen me, I have chosen you, but that you may go and bring forth fruit, your fruit should remain. Now, we were very sweet. As sweet as Christ at one time. But suddenly something happened. And the sweetness is gone. There is bitterness. The, the fruit that had not remained. So, dear brothers and sisters, here we have this challenge before us. How can we have the fruit that will remain with us throughout our life? This is the reason unto which God has chosen us. Now we are all happy to be chosen, aren't we? We are happy to be chosen for something. When you are school going children, we were chosen for various things. And we were very happy about it. Likewise the Christians would like to dwell upon that, the chosen of God. We are chosen by God. What a great privilege. But that we were chosen that we may go and bring forth fruit. And our fruit should remain. So then let us ask the Lord to help us to produce fruit of the Lord Jesus, the characteristics of the Lord Jesus, the fruit of the Spirit as we have, uh, we have uh, in the Word of God explained to us. Now if I may ask you the question as to where you find the fruit of the Spirit, many of us would know the reverence, right? Okay, can I hear a try? Yes. The fruit of the Spirit. Yes, please. please. That is the fruit of Christ. Please. Yes. Where do you find the reverence? Yes, Galatians. That's right. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, 22. Now we are good at this. Galatians 5.22 says, The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Fruit of the Spirit. And we know that they are found in Galatians chapter 5. But the question is, are they found in our lives? They are found in Galatians, yes, but are they found in our lives? Why is this different from time to time? Why is this, our fruit uh, does not remain with us? So dear brothers and sisters, this is some serious business that the Lord is talking to us about. This is about a core issue of being a Christian. 
of being a believer. I have chosen you that you may go and bring forth fruit and your fruit should remain. You see, that this is the only the qualification. This is how we can find out whether this person truly is a believer. That is by the fruit remaining, the fruit that cannot be shaken. Our Lord Jesus spoke these words just before he <coughs> went to the cross. So remember this thought that we are going to study today about God's choice that he has chosen us uh, has uh, much to do with fruit bearing and the final result should be that we bear fruit that remain. It is good for us to study about the choice of God but the end result should be that we be committed to uh, life with the Lord Jesus, life uh, uh, following the Lord Jesus bearing his fruit. It is not anyone else's fruit, that it is the fruit of the Lord Jesus that we need to bear. It is the fruit of Christ that should be found in our lives. So, as we uh, study these words, let us uh, be uh, committed to the Lord for Him to work in our lives, that we may be uh, truly those who bear the fruit of the Lord Jesus. I'd like to complete that section by just reading a verse or two more in Philippians chapter 1, verse 11, please. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 11. Being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. So, being filled with the fruits of righteousness that remain, that's the meaning, which are by Jesus Christ. Not by uh, anyone else, by Jesus Christ. It is so, the Bible is not simply asking us to be good, righteous, loving, peaceful, but this is something more. Now being of heavenly birth, now why are we trying to be uh, uh, good in earthly terms? We, we are trying to uh, make ourselves good. Okay, good person, loving person, peaceful person. But what God has called us for is something much, much greater than that. Being filled with the fruit of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ. So it has to be Christ in me. Whatever Christ gives, whatever Christ produces in my life. So we must give ourselves wholly, totally to the Lord Jesus. He is the one. He must produce. We have taken too much of responsibility on ourselves. And trying to be good, leaving the Lord Jesus aside. I would like to also read from the Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 16. Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 16. Awake, O north wind. And come thou south, blow upon my garden, that the spices thereof may flow out. Let my beloved come into his garden and eat his pleasant fruits. Now it is his fruit that he is going to come and see. Now when the Lord Jesus comes and he wants to see our lives and to taste our lives, how we are, it has to be His fruit. If we are producing this earthly goodness, earthly love and earthly righteousness, that will never give Him any satisfaction. Here it says, let 
my beloved come into his garden and eat his pleasant fruit. But I think you will agree with me, dear brothers and sisters, what we find today in his garden is fruit that does not belong to him. Not his fruit, but man-made fruit. Our own fruit, our own quality, our goodness, our love, our righteousness that man has produced according to man's standards. So there is something missing. We need to now think about this. It is His fruit, the Lord Jesus Christ. So this is the purpose of the choice of God. God has chosen us that we may produce His fruit that will remain. That will remain. That will overcome every uh, opposition of this world and will not be hindered by what is going on uh, in and around our own lives. So, we are studying today about the choice of God. In John's Gospel chapter 15, verse 16, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit. The Lord Jesus said these words to the disciples who had in fact chosen to follow him. Can you remember that one day the Lord Jesus was walking by the sea and he saw two brothers casting their nets. And the Lord Jesus said, follow me. And there was a choice in front of them. They chose to follow him. And the Bible says they left their nets as they were in the sea and followed the Lord Jesus. So there was a choice. Now after three and a half years, the Lord Jesus is telling them, you have not chosen me. I have chosen you. And then there were two other disciples, two brothers with their father in the uh, boat. And they were there and the Lord Jesus said, follow me. And they left their boat, left their nets, left their father and left their fish. And began to follow the Lord Jesus. They made a choice. Now what about you? You have made a choice to follow the Lord Jesus. But having followed him thus far, he says, you have not chosen me. But I have chosen you. What does that mean? That means that God has been looking at us even before we came to choose the Lord Jesus. Now we need to accept this divine truth and principle of the choice of God. That God chooses His people. When it comes to salvation, and the purposes of God, it is according to the choice of God. Man has no say in this matter. God chooses. We read in the story of Abraham, God chose Abraham. 